Hi everybody, welcome to another Broken Meeple Express review. If you remember, if you like what you see, please remember to leave a thumbs up and comment on this video. And if you want to check out the Patreon campaign and consider supporting it, I'd be most grateful. The support is always appreciated. So shock horror of horrors, I'm taking a look at the train game. Get out! Get out of there! <gasps> Trains? No! Well, whatever. I mean, the, the train theme in here is not the most well represented. This is Shinkansen Zero K, or Zero K, I can't remember how you pronounce it, but it's basically set around the 1960s where it was all about the Olympics in Japan. And so what you are doing is essentially building the bullet train that goes from Osaka to Tokyo and the Olympics, you're participating in them by placing flame cauldrons on there to get points and bonuses. But for the most part, it's all about the building of the train on this board while also developing the city. So it's, it's not an 18xx game, it's not a pick up and deliver game, it's essentially a kind of interactive... Uh, interactive building game, I guess, with the other players. The train is just part of the theme and part of the history. You could have substituted any other mode of transportation, really, if you were to change it from the Olympic setting. But the way this game works is you have five rounds, and it's all based on these cards, event cards at the top of the board. Depending on your player count, you shuffle up different colours of these and they're laid out above the board and these dictate several things. They first dictate how many actions everybody gets in a round. They also dictate the price and the victory points for building actual train tracks in the round and they have another action or end of round ability or something else that triggers as a result of, you know, doing a particular action as on your turn. But then what you are doing during the game is you are building a train out of these carriage cards. Players will start off with a very basic, let's see if I can get them separated here, a very basic tail and front end of a train. There's four of each and so with up to four players you basically select them at random. Each of them has an income action and a standard action and so you can use other people's trains but you've got to pay them the money for it or you can use your own but it still has a cost you pay to the bank. But then as time goes on, your train basically starts off like, whoop, get it right, there we go, yep, starts off like this for now, so you've got a tail end in the train, but then during the round you will obtain more carriages that you slip in between and essentially build your train longer and longer. These extra carriage cards have not only got city names, which is relevant for potential scoring and what it is you want to do in the game, but they also have a cost. They move station markers along an upward track, which dictates at the end of the game how many points those color stations are worth. But they also have other actions, special abilities, and the round bonuses, that kind of thing, that you can get from simply having the train in your collection. So it expands your options as the game goes on, while also giving you potential for scoring opportunities at the end of the game so these are very important and it's done with a cool turn order sequence where you have a turn order chart which you do it randomly at the start but then what happens is when you pick the train carriage which is done as a tableau so let's say I've got uh, one two three four five let's say in a uh, well, this would be a free player game I've got five trains here I decide I want to have let's see find a train token I want to have this train here the one that is closest to the turn order track goes first in taking the train and doing their actions, but then they select where they are on the turn order track, get the bonus, and then it's in that order that you select the train you want in the first place. So there's two aspects to the turn order, and believe me, timing is everything in this game. This is certainly a game about timing. <laughs> You've got to really gauge what the opponents are doing and when they're doing it. And that is probably one of the best things about this game is that it definitely does feel like one of the more interactive Euros that there is. Because it's not enough just to simply go, oh well, you build over there, I'll just do this thing. No, we're all building on the same map. So with point scoring, you need to fully develop a city. If you don't put the train track down, it could lose you points at the end. But then if there's no station on it, it probably won't be worth that many points anyway. And even then, what station? Because the gold station might be on it, but then if the gold marker is the third in the track, it's only going to be worth one point. Whoopee, you want to have the black station perhaps, because the black station's worth six. And whoever, everybody is juggling around this track, you know, moving the markers up. The stations are limited supply, diminishing returns for points. And of course, the points and cost of the tracks themselves chop and change from round to round because of these event cards. You really do need to pay attention to the opponents, particularly with regards to the carriage card city names, because 
you can score points if you can get a sequential sequence of like, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of the city numbers. They're just numbered for that purpose. But then also, if you see that an opponent's got, hmm, you've got a lot for a Saka there, you're probably going to want to build quite good on the Saka. So maybe I'll take in a Saka train and just let you build on it for me. Because then you do all the work and I get a few points at the end for doing mostly diddly squat. But I, if I can rearrange my train and I can put the one at the start and that gives me more points, there's a lot of that consideration. Sometimes you want to do the development yourself to get those initial points, but then sometimes you're willing to just let the opponent do it for you. But will they? Have they got priorities elsewhere? Again, there's a lot of that you've got to consider, and that was good fun for me. I really did get surprised on how interactive this ended up, and certainly when I got the game out and looked at it, I thought, oh god, is this going to be one of, like, one of those share investment ones where I'm going to have to, like, oh, how good's the company worth and that? And no, it is much more simplistic than that. It's a very simple scoring system. It's a very simple way of, all right, you need to develop the place, build the track, put a station down. Three-step process depending on how far you get along those three steps or dictate whether it gains you points, how many points, or whether it even loses you points. The rest of it though, in terms of how you build stuff, is pretty straightforward. And the iconography is not difficult to understand as well. The actions and everything are clearly explained in the rule book and eventually you'll pick it up pretty quickly. The rule book is not complicated. There's only three phases to a term and there's pictorial diagrams to represent what everything is. Honestly, I didn't have much trouble learning this game, although I do recommend not skimming for the rule book. You probably want to get the rule book down and teach it properly and not just like go into it blind because it might flummox a few people there. But yeah, overall, it was a pretty solid system. Now, it sounds like I'm raving about this game. There's certainly a lot of good things about it, but there are one or two iffy things, one of them very big and one of them more nitpick. Firstly, the nitpick, the theme is not necessarily strong here. Yes, it's based on a particular historical period and it fits the timeline that you're doing, but whatever, I'm building on spots. The train is just basically a card selection of different actions. You're not actually moving a train anywhere. You're just building the track. You know, there's probably less to do with trains, you know, about as much as in Ticket to Ride, really, when it comes to how much there is to do with trains. The biggest problem, though, and this is actually so big, it's a killer, in a sense, for a lot of people. And for me, it's also dropped it a fair amount as a result, the downtime. Oh my word! This game can generate a lot of AP, and as a result, it can generate significant downtime. And the biggest problem, and the reason for this problem, is because it uses, despite the fact that this little turn order sequence mechanic and these cards and that are actually quite a cool system, it uses one very dated mechanic. The action points that you have, they're represented by these crosses and you get so many around you might get, it depends on player count, so with more players you get less actions but with more less players you get more actions. So let's say I get four in a round, okay cool, so I got four, brilliant. So I get to do four different actions, it could be something I borrow from you, it could be the one on the event card, it can be any combination of stuff I've got here as long as it's once each. You do all your actions before the next player. Fail. <laughs> this is a problem and it basically means that even in even in a two-player game, although in a two-player it's not as bad because you've only got so many actions on the table, but when you've got four of you, or even three really, man this game drags a bit. You are there sat there just waiting for somebody to do their various actions and because the board state is communal and everything's about timing, you can't just breeze through your turn and plan ahead because somebody might build a station somewhere where you were going to do it or somebody might you know, grab a track that you were expecting to go. Somebody might develop an area that you wanted. Someone might buy the station that was worth so many points and now it's not worth as much and you don't need to buy it anymore. And somebody might go on the flame cauldron olympic space for a bonus now it's like oh that's messed up my plan as well there's and somebody even might just take the cards you wanted and that messes up your plan you find that you're sat there waiting for someone to have to reconfigure their turn on a regular basis but also to go through all your actions and resolve them and not the quickest steps i mean okay right i gotta put a flame cauldron down right i gotta put that there that gets me a bonus easy enough okay i'm gonna put one here i need to build a station right that's worth so many points I'll probably take the white one, I want to put it over here, that costs this much, that gets me this many points. The, the actions themselves are not as detailed, but particularly with your first few games, they're not going to be the shortest ones as well. Mainly it's just the fact that because you have quite a lot of options, particularly when you get to round 3, 4 and 5, 
it just means that there's a lot of time wasted. And if there's four of you, you gotta wait for potentially that person to do four, that person to do four, that person to do four before you get a chance to do four. You're there twiddling your thumbs for a bit because there's not a lot you can do to influence the game when it's not your turn. It's a similar problem also to what I believe Grand Austria Hotel had with the turn order sequence. I mentioned with this tile that you, where did I put the tile? Where did I put the tile? It's got buried, there it is. With this, you're picking whose turn it is to pick a train. That's a very small part of the game. It's mainly a case of where on the tableau of cards, you, which trains you choose will dictate your turn order for the round. You might have gone first in round one by picking the train closest to the marker. So you went first and you did your actions then. Then player two, then player three, then player four did theirs. You then have a brief little intermission where you're back in the game and you decide to go for the last train in the row. So which means that player one, two and three have to go before you get to go again. So you went first in one round, you went last in the second. Is this ringing any bells to Grand Austria Hotel, anybody? It's the same problem of this snake-style turn sequence, which means that you could be sat twiddling your thumbs for a long time before you get to do any serious like influencing on the board. And believe me, you're going to want to go last every now and again because you're either waiting for players to do stuff or you just really need that train. I just don't think I ever want to touch this before again. That amount of downtime, much like with Grand Austria Hotel, it's the exact same problem and the exact same thing that I would do with player count in that game. I would play GAA, I would play Grand Austria Hotel with just two, maybe you can convince me with three. This is exactly the same. Two, you can convince me for free. I will not play this and any of those other, and that other game with four. And it's not like the trains are ordered in any particular fashion so that, oh yeah, this train is more powerful, therefore it's at the thing. No, it's just five random trains. Put them down and one train could be really rubbish for you even though it makes you go first. So do I really want to go first? But then the best train ever could be the one that goes first, in which case happy days for whoever gets to pick that train. It is random, so the the way that you will use up every single card in the deck, which there's more than this even, there's quite a few in there to give them credit, and they do have a decent range of abilities and bonuses, but it is random how they come out. You're aiming for a particular city, and the city card just doesn't seem to come out until late game. Or you really want some Tokyo cards, and then all of a sudden, three of them come out at once. So you're only going to get one of them in the round. That element of randomness can mess up somebody's plan for point scoring, particularly if they are focusing on one or two cities, which is a little bit of a negative for me. Now, the game does have a solo mode in here, where an AI effectively tries to behave like an opponent. It's not too difficult to work. It's essentially done on a a sort of very small priority system of like, well, it will try to do action A, and if it can't do that, it will do action B. It's fine. It, you get some enjoyment out of it, but honestly, I don't think it substitutes a multiplayer game enough, because in some Euro games, it can, when there's not a huge amount of interaction. But here, because there is such a significant amount of interaction with other players, like building and developing stuff at a time when you don't want them to, or when you really want them to, that an AI just can't substitute as well. Like I say, it's not a bad solo mode and it's quick and it's relatively straightforward. It'll take about an hour to go through the game tops, but yeah, it, it's fine. It does it, tick a box, great. But honestly, I think this game could have survived fine without a solo mode. And component quality is decent enough. I mean, it's basic wooden pieces, but for the price point, it's only about 25 pound. It's a pretty decent deal overall, actually, compared to most Euro games these days. You're getting a decent interactive Euro for about £25, just with maybe some cheapness on some of the production cards and maybe, you know, not the greatest of themes, but also just that glaring downtime issue, which really does hurt. You know, this is a game that shouldn't take that long. It says 45 to 60 minutes. I don't see you playing this game in 45 minutes, frankly, unless you're playing it solo. And trust me, the game I played of this took longer than 60 minutes with four players. I guarantee you it does. And that may not sound like a long time, but you're probably taking a good 90 minutes with four of you. It just drags on that a little bit too long, or it doesn't feel like you're achieving that much, because by the time it gets round to you, bearing in mind, you have less actions in a four-player game. So you'd think that would balance things out, but it doesn't. You know, you might only have two actions in a round, but you're still twiddling your thumbs for a while, and then when it does get to your turn, you just do two actions. The turns don't feel as fulfilling when that happens, so bit of a miss in terms of player scaling, but the game does have some good fun moments about it and I do think for the simplicity of the rules and the cheapness of the price point it is still a good fun interactive time it's just 
you might want to be uh, skeptical on some of the randomness with the cards and definitely the player scaling. So overall, Shinkansen Zero K was a little bit of a surprise. It's not like blown me away or anything, but I was expecting this to be kind of like meh, chuck it away, not that interested. But no, it's actually been a genuinely good experience, just subject to those flaws. I'm giving it a pretty solid 7 out of 10 with a seal of endorsement. I think for some people this is going to be pretty good fun actually. If you don't mind the downtime, then by all means play this with 4 players. You're going to get a very interactive game which is going to lend its fair share of good fun. But otherwise, you're probably going to want to play this with less players. But if you're looking for a cheap, easy, 2 player game with some decent interaction with the opponent... I think this is actually a pretty solid two-player game and one worth considering. So it showed up at Essen, didn't get a chance to play it then, I have now. It's sadly not quite enough for me to want to retain it in my collection, but I could recommend this to people and hence I'm giving it a seal of endorsement. So that's it for me, I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review. Until next time, please remember, if you can, leave a thumbs up on this video and comment, is this a game that you're interested in? If you tried anything else by this publisher or this designer, you know, by all means, let me know your thoughts. Until next time, you can check out my recent two detail reviews for Tabanusi and also for Ark Nova that I did last year. So take care, and remember as always, it's only a game. Bye for now.